Going live, and we're live. There it is, guys. There it is. What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Sorry for the delay, and I'm sure it's going to take a little while for most people to get in the chat. Yeah, we'll just shoot the shit for a bit. Yeah. Um, it's a nice bottle. It is. It's a beautiful bottle. I love the gold that they decide to use for this. It's nice. Uh, this won some awards, I think, yeah? I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not sure if what it won, but uh, well, it did. Jim Murray gave it whiskey of the of the year. Your boy, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But my favorite reviewer of all time, Jim Murray. <laughs> Your buddy Jim Murray. <laughs> you guys go way back. Um, so we got a few people jumping in now. We got Go Habs, Loch Ness, Donner Pass Whiskey, and Travis Faircloth. What's up, gentlemen? Hello, hello. How's it going? We missed you. It's been a while. Yeah. It's when was a, the last time? The Pappy. Yeah, the Pappy. Yeah. It's, been a minute. it's been a minute, as they would say, as my as my students would say. <laughs> that's what the kids say. Yeah, that's what they say these days. So, Jeremy, why don't you tell us what we got over here? This is the Booker's Big Time Batch Rye Whiskey. Um, I think they bottled, I want to say, around 9,000 or so, give or take. Um, this is bottle 5,300. 48 yep what's crazy is what happens to whiskey in kentucky because this has a limit of what it can go into barrel by like uh, to, in order to be considered a straight rye i believe i could uh, unless the rules are different than bourbon but this is 68.1 percent. 68.1 this is a monster this is like melt your face off abv so i think the only other like rye whiskeys you're going to get with this amount of age at cast strength is maybe some of the Willets, but I don't think the Willets even go up. Like this thing is 13 years. Was it one month, 12 days old? Yeah. I don't think the Willets even get that high with their rye. I know their bourbons go up to the you know, 16 yeah. years plus, but I don't think their ryes go that high. So I think this is probably one of the oldest cast strength rye whiskeys yeah. ever bottled. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be up there. Um, I mean, there's some, there's, well, Alberta Premium used to put out a 25-year-old and a 30-year-old, but that wasn't cast strength. That was just 40%. Right. Yeah. Um, um, and I think there was, there was something else bottled, like a 20-year-old, 25-year-old rye whiskey. Lock stock, lock, and, lock, stock, and Barrel is an American, it's an American company that bottles Alberta rye, and they have a 17, a 16-year-old and an 18-year-old. So that might be the oldest. Right. And I don't know if that's cast strength, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, we got Pressman in the house. What's up, buddy? Graham Young, what's going on, bud? Bird Dog, how are you? Eric Waite, how are you? Everyone's showing up tonight. Yeah. What's, up? what's up, everyone? Mike Snook. Whenever Jeremy's in the house, everybody <laughs> knows that there's going to be some quality whiskey being sipped that day. <laughs> So yeah, uh, well, without further ado, I'll, I'll give you the honor of uh, explaining how you acquired this and maybe opening it up. Yeah, um, so I won this in raffle. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware. YouTube kind of has a couple groups where people can throw up bottles uh, for raffle. They use the US um, Powerball, Fireball, um, Mega Ball lotteries to sell spots, essentially. It's a good way to, um, to buy stuff or to have your chance to buy something on the secondary market where you normally wouldn't be spending, you know, $700 where you can just buy a spot for, you know, 20, 30, 40 bucks. Yeah. And have I've, a chance to win. Um, I've yet to be successful. Yeah. I've spent a lot of money on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeremy has a little better luck than I do. Uh, he must have a little Irish in him or something. Yeah. So essentially what, what happened with this is I paid $70 for essentially a one in 10 chance to win. And I hit it and won the bottle. Um, so yes, seven hundred dollars US is the secondary price for these, and I've seen them for about eight hundred now too. What's the throttle saying, <laughs> Daniel? What's going on, buddy? Whiskey <laughs> throttle in the house. <laughs> Daniel took over on Tuesday, um, which I don't know if that's going to be my time anymore. I don't know. I, I don't know what works best. It seems like we keep going live on Thursdays. That seems to work best for both of us. Whatever we have time, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. I don't know, but right now I'm drinking a dram that Jeremy brought over. It's uh, Independent Bottler, Asta Morris, 
It's a Glen Berge, which was aged for 18 years in a PX cask, and it's 48 percent, and that's fantastic stuff. Yeah, unfiltered, like not even like paper filtered. Like literally, there's sediment like in the bottle. If you shake yeah. this up a bit, yeah. stuff is like floating around. Yeah, in, it's. In the, I don't it's know if you can see that. Cloudy AF, basically. But there's like there's sediment in there swirling around. Yeah. It's good. Insecticas in the house. She's looking forward to hey, the Hey, how's it going? <laughs> the Mash and Drum. What's up, buddy? How's it going, Jason? What's up, Mash? All right. We got we got about 19 people in so far. We got four thumbs up. 19 people, four thumbs up. That doesn't add up to <laughs> me. But, I mean, we are we are bringing the goods tonight, guys. So hit that hit that like button if you don't mind. I also have these two bad boys behind Jeremy's head. We're going to open that up, and we're going to let it air out in yeah. a sec. Yeah. Um, we got some time until the Scotch 4 dummies go on, so I figure take our time with this, not rush it. Make well, sure I think we want to pour this. We want to let it sit for a bit, right? It's 68.1% um, alcohol, so it must need a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going <laughs> to – I don't know if you guys have opened up a Booker's Wax before, but, man – Hopefully this goes well. Well, wow, that's going well actually. It popped off a nice chunk. Right. There you go. <laughs> Screw those copycats. <laughs> What's he talking about? Um, show those GMs. All right. So, as some of you may know, I reviewed earlier this year a GNM Bow Blair 1993 cast strength. And Jeremy's about to let the wow. angels sing. So I'm going to be – moment of silence, guys. A lot of people like to rip the cork off. I always cringe when people do that. I'm like, you're going to break the cork. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, yeah. that's nice. Is that a wood cork or a plastic cork? This is a synthetic cork. Yeah, so yeah. So you could have ripped it off then. <laughs> so this is the Aberfeldy Gordon McPhail – Connoisseur's Choice cast strength at 58.7%. It's 24 years old, barreled in 1993, and bottled in 2018. Uh, it's a little older than 24 years old. Um, but, yeah, I also did a Gordon McPhail earlier on this year. A bunch of you guys know about it. It's probably my highest mark to date, maybe tied with one other whiskey. Um, so you guys should check that out. I don't want to break anything, so I'm just pushing that back. And I got this one as well. Um, and so far, I'm not disappointed. It's very, very good. It's just that other one was something else. Right. That other one was something else. Yeah. So, All right. Well, I'm going to pour this out. Uh, the glasses we're using tonight are these really cool ones from uh, Final Touch. It's like a Glen Karen, but there's like a very wide bulb at the bottom. It's really good for cast strength stuff because it gives it a nice – big surface area for it to breathe. So uh, last time when I poured you the Pappy, I uh, gave you a bit of a baby pour. Yeah. I'll make sure <laughs> I'll make sure your glass uh, looks full this time. He was editing the video. He's like, man, I could have I could have hooked the brother up a little bit more. Than that. <laughs> it's all good, man. That's that's uh, gold, liquid gold that you're pouring. So Yeah, so here you go. Here's your tram. That's a whiskey in the six pour in a regular <laughs> Ben Karen glass. <laughs> Baby dram for you tonight. I like that. That's cool. Where'd you get that? <laughs> it's a raw bar. It's whiskey in the six oh, special. Wow. That smells amazing. All right, I'm gonna actually like that was just for a joke. I spent six dollars <laughs> for that joke. Hopefully, it's <laughs> that that was a that's what a whiskey in the six pour. Actually, so I don't know if anybody was following my Instagram. We're gonna let that sit up for a little bit. Um, unless you, you have anything else to share about these two. This bottle here? Um, no, not that I can think of right now. Okay, so if he thinks about, he'll cut, he'll cut in. But um, first, I want to say hello to Richie Z because he just stepped in the house. Richie, what's up, brother? Um, yesterday was a pretty incredible day for me. Um, yes, I felt a little bit like what's uh, the show Entourage? Something like, a little bit like that. I woke up, I was told that, that I was getting 
the full treatment and being flown to Windsor to try the new Canadian club 41 year old. So um, obviously I have a full-time job. I had to swindle some things um, to figure out how I could do that. But they picked me up in front of my house, 6.30 in the morning. Limo? It was a town car. Nice. Town car. Nice. So like literally rolled out the red carpet, um, drove me to Billy Bishop Airport, flew me to Windsor from Billy Bishop to the, to the uh, air, to Windsor. Um, we went to the old Canadian club, um, like basically the museum where, okay. where, you know, Al Capone was, had several meetings in wow. there. Talk. Yeah, it was insane. Like we literally sat in the same room that Al Capone had meetings in. It was insane. <laughs> it was like, if you're a history buff, which I'm, I'm actually not, but like, you gotta just, I was in awe. Like yeah. I was absolutely geeking out the entire time I was in there. Um, just the ambiance, like Hiram Walker built that entire place uh, to replicate um, an Italian building in Florence, apparently. And it's just gorgeous inside. Like the whole place looks like it costs, who knows? Like if, if they had to build the exact same thing now, it would be like a hundred million dollars. Right. You know what I mean? Um, but had that tour uh, with the ambassador and, and a couple of the uh, head people of CC and and there was a couple writers there from uh, a writer there from uh, Whiskey Mag, um, and another writer that does the LCBO and the BC magazines. Okay. So uh, it, it was very exclusive. Like I, I was like, are they sure they got the right guy? Like, am I really supposed to be here? <laughs> but uh, it was pretty pretty incredible. And then they brought us to lunch. We tried the forty one year old, which. When I got home from work this morning, a package was at my door. And this is the sample of it. But uh, they couldn't send me home with it yesterday because I was taking a flight. So I didn't have a bag because I knew I was only going to be there for a few hours, right? Um, so they flew me back. Or sorry. We tried the 41-year-old as well as the new uh, Barley Canadian Club that's coming out. Okay. Haven't seen that. That's really cool. Yeah. It's actually really impressive. Um Kind of reminds me of like Compass Box type whiskeys. Okay. Uh, tried those at, at lunch. Really, really nice lunch at uh, a place called 14. 14 or, yeah, 14, I think. Um, which is right over the lake or, you know, you can see Detroit literally across the, mm -hmm. the river or whatever it is. Um, then they flew us, or not flew us, they drove us from there to the warehouse where all the Hiram Walker, like CC Weiser's, Pikes Creek, Gooderum. The giant, giant warehouse. It's yeah. Like a million just barrels, right? Barrels everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and we got to do a barrel pull, too, actually. Yeah. Uh, well, I saw the video. So I don't know if you guys are following Rob on Instagram. His story video yesterday was him doing a pull with the thief, like, right from, right from the barrel. And he pours himself, like, a very respectable dram. And I was like, how do you not let that whole thing fill up that glass? <laughs> I'm like, I, where's your heavy hand? <laughs> you know what? That thing's a little bit easier to operate than a regular bar. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's just there's so many people watching. I couldn't make a fool of myself. You couldn't right? be like, this is how I normally pour at home. <laughs> yeah. I'm full glass. I'm full <laughs> going carrying glass. But I'm not lying to you when I say if, if they ever decide to go cast strength with this whiskey, because they're going to do a 42-year-old, a 43-year-old, a 44-year-old, a 45-year-old, oh, really? wow. and then they're going to skip five years and go to straight to 50. Oh, okay. So obviously expect prices to go up and all that start, sort of thing, But and they plan to do something different with each release. Um, but that barrel pull was one of the best sips of whiskey I've ever had. Really? It was, yeah. it was just phenomenal. Well, think about it. It's, it's probably one of their nice, nice casts too, right? Yeah. They'd probably pull out a good one. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. So, I mean, it was 41 per, or 41 year old, um, whiskey that's uncut, unchill filter, right. just like, and the weird thing was there was like zero sediment in it or anything like that. I was like, and it, just so smooth like it literally mm -hmm. tasted as if it was under 50 percent did they tell you what the percentage like what they thought it was they think it's around 62 62 yeah uh -huh. so uh because the warehouses uh in windsor are heated in the winter mm -hmm. they it's a similar kind of atmosphere than kentucky in the sense that um they're not losing time in aging Right. Like in Scotland, they say in the winter months, the, in the distilleries that don't have 
heated warehouses, they they don't age in those winter months. Yeah. Uh, whereas this whiskey is is getting heated. Like it, it's it's hot in there all year round. So it's barrels keep working, keep yeah, expanding. Yeah. Exactly. So it was pretty cool. It was honestly the the entire experience was pretty surreal for me because you know I mean uh, like I said, who the hell am I? <laughs> I'm just a <laughs> hey, whiskey reviewer on YouTube. You're so. whiskey in the six. <laughs> That's but right. it was pretty cool, man. It was really, really cool. Definitely, I, I have Meredith from Praxis to thank for everything. I mean, um, Rob from CC, he was awesome. Tish from CC, she was awesome. Uh, it was just an incredible experience. Well, I was super jealous because that's pretty. Uh, that's a pretty awesome uh, trip to be offered for sure. Yeah, honestly, I there's I couldn't have planned a better one. My like myself, right. if I if I planned it myself, it would actually have gotten horribly worse. Oh well, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, it was really really cool. <laughs> Meredith hooked it up. She she took care of me. So yeah, well that's awesome. Yeah. So we're expecting that to come out when? So that's coming out in October in Ontario. We get it first. Okay. And then the rest of Canada gets it around November. And are they releasing it into the states? They're they're releasing, uh, I think, eight hundred bottles into the U.S. and then another eight hundred bottles in Europe. So I remember. Okay. Because I remember seeing the label for it it was released you know months ago right and um you know it had like a u.s distributor printed on the label mm -hmm. so a lot of people were thinking well is this a, you know a u.s release only like they put canada yeah. last year u.s next uh, this year but that's good that they're uh, they're bringing it out here yeah. as well so they're thinking about thirteen thousand and i think 600 bottles so it's a lot so twelve thousand are coming to canada only Okay. Like we get all of it pretty much, and then the rest of the world has to fight over the rest. And so the price point on this one, it's going to be three hundred bucks. Three hundred. So so fifty dollars I mean, more than last year. Fifty dollars more than last year, but you're talking about a whiskey that's been aged for forty one years old, and it doesn't have any of those like flavors that you would get from something really really old. Like it, it has all kinds of fresh flavors in it. It's not know, over oaked so. or no, not at all. So it's honestly, I, I wish and I hope. Cause I, I spoke to people and I tried to like, you know, whatever. I hope one day they do the barrel proof because I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And this is awesome too. But I mean that barrel But I mean proof. like if you're getting a 40 plus year old whiskey barrel proof at 62%. Yeah. That's crazy. It's insane. It will like, like I was saying with this, it's, it's the Kentucky effect where the longer it stays in the barrel, the higher the ABV goes because water is evaporating from that liquid faster than the actual alcohol content. Yeah. So, whereas in, in Scotland, it's the opposite. Right. It drops 2% probably a year right. in ABV. Yeah. So a lot of uh, highlights here. What's going on, everyone? We haven't been looking at the chat. Why don't you post a video on YouTube? I will. I'm definitely going to post a video on the whole experience on YouTube. <clears throat> When I review this, I just want to um, talk to them one more time before I post that video. And then I have a whole bunch of stuff like pictures and stuff like that that I'm going to incorporate into it. Maybe I'll get my buddy over here to help me uh, edit it because he's way better at that stuff than I am. Um, Jason Fisk in the house. What's up, buddy? Uh, I hope I didn't miss anybody. We got about 25 in right now. Um, what were you writing on the barrel? So they, they asked us to sign the barrel, which was uh, a barrel, sorry, which was pretty cool. So yeah. I just signed my name and I wrote whiskey in the six right underneath it. Um, <laughs> whiskey throttle saying he wish he knew someone. <laughs> hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I think we're caught up. So 25 people in. Thanks for joining us, guys. The Dan Trout's in the house. How's it going, buddy? I hope I didn't miss anybody. There's sometimes there's guys like hiding in the in the mm -hmm. in the background. They don't they don't want to make themselves known. <laughs> Come say hello. <laughs> All right. Well, you think we should nose this thing or what? Absolutely. Okay. Just in time because I just finished that one. Peter White's in the house. So Peter White is one guy that would absolutely die for this, I think, because he's like hardcore rye guy. <laughs> Jason Coates is saying he's not hiding, he's just watching baseball. 
I'm sure there's some people watching football. That could be uh, why we only have 25 in the house at the moment. It's weird because within, like, usually on our lives, we'll get up to about a thousand views, like, within the first couple of days. Right. But in the house, we, it's usually a little less. Peter White says he needs some of the bookers. So the stream was announced, but the problem was I didn't upload like the warning on my um, YouTube channel. So I think that could have played a factor. I, I decided to go a different route and I did it on uh, Instagram instead. I just mm. stole your picture. So I should have definitely done the old school way I normally do it, but. This smells amazing. So this still smells like really tight to me. Like it needs to open up a lot more, but right away you're getting. So have you, have you done it in this glass before though? Or well, obviously you haven't tasted it. This is my first time trying. Yeah. No, I'm saying, have you tasted anything in this glass? Yeah. Before? Yeah. These glasses are great for, um, for foolproof cast strength kind of stuff. Just cause it's got so much surface area. If you look at it versus a regular Glencairn. Benji's just listening while working. What's up, buddy? I don't know if you can see. Can you hear yeah. us well, guys? Uh, we're using a different format than we normally use, so I'm not sure exactly how it's coming out. Um, and we can see the chat, which is good, but I don't know what else we're missing. I think that smells great, to be honest with you. Like... I don't get any alcohol on the nose. Like at all. No. Someone crying? Sounds like someone's crying. Yeah, everyone that's not drinking this is crying right now. <laughs> <laughs> Big spiciness. Brown sugar. Yeah, someone's crying. Hold on. So Jeremy's going to entertain you guys for a sec. My wife will be back in like five minutes. She's just teaching at our gym. But uh, Jeremy will entertain you guys. I'll be right back. One of the kids are crying. You can hear you guys crying from here. Sorry. I will be giving away um, two one-ounce samples of this before we're done tonight. So stick around for your chance to win. Oh, okay. So, rye spice, baking spice, brown sugar, cinnamon, typical like bourbon rye notes. But I can't believe how like mild it's smelling on the nose right now. 68.1%. But yeah, it's good. So anyway, like I said before, I acquired this through um, through raffle, a raffle draw. If you want to know the ins and outs of a raffle, how to get into it, how to do it, what they're all about, um, I have a video on my Patreon that explains it. I go through a very detailed uh, start to finish on how to do it, and what to expect. It's a good way to have a chance to win something at the secondary market that you wouldn't normally pay full price for. Like I said, these things, um, uh, U.S. secondary prices on these, $700 to $800, give or take. Oh, man. All right, I'm going to drink it. Oh. Okay. Huge arrival, just spice, cloves, the mouthfeel is great, very viscous, lots of rye spice. Oh, I feel like this is going to take a long time to get through as far as it, like opening up, keeps delivering. 
Sorry about that, man. How are we doing over here? We got 26. Opening up a little bit. I took a sip. Did you? Yeah. It was good. It smells good. So. What's the, do you know how much rise in this one? I do not. So um, it, going by Liquor Hound's video, his review that he did a couple years ago, he said that it was around 70 to 80% rye. Yeah, I would say so too. It's definitely up there. Julia's in the house. What's going on, Julia? Hey, Julia. Rabbit in red, how are you? Daryl, how's it going, buddy? Got about 28 now. Nine o'clock, so we still got some time. Uh, Daryl's asking about the cash strength lot 40, 11 year old. Did you hear anything about that? I guess you probably wouldn't. It's, it's, yeah. Well, we tried it. We tried it. At Spirit of Toronto um, in the springtime. Yeah. I think it's, personally, I think it's better than the 12, but I could be wrong. We had some, oh, and, and Daniel, actually, I'm going to have to warn you as well. In I had a sample that I sent to Daniel in this, like a similar bottle to this, and this Lot 40, um, we were going to try some of it tonight. This is a Lot 40 cast strength 12-year-old, but then we noticed that there was like a moldiness to the bottom of the, the, the bottle, or a cap, I mean. Um, and Jeremy's thinking it smells a bit vinegary. So we're not going to drink that for safety reasons. So the sample that I sent to you, Daniel, uh, that'll be in the mail. Don't drink that one. The one that comes in this, the, the one that comes in the regular sample bottle, I, I gave you two samples. So the one that comes in the regular sample bottle, you can drink that, but don't drink the one that comes in that sample bottle. <clears throat> Uh, I saw that uh, Whiskey Wednesday did the original Lot 40. Yeah. And he was like, I'll sell my soul for a sample of the cash strength. I'm like, I'll take your soul. <laughs> so uh, I'm, uh, I'm giving him a sample. What, what, what do you think the a soul would go for on the secondary market? Oh, I don't know. What are souls going for these days? <laughs> yeah, I know that, that cash strength is pretty, pretty awesome. Um, yeah, as soon as the newest 11 year old is out, we'll grab a bottle. We'll do a head to head. Why don't you have to add a drop of water to this at 68%? It's crazy. Well, I think because, well, one, it's aged 13 years. This is really nice. Like, and Booker known is the man. Yeah. So, Jeremy went to Detroit when he picked up this bottle. He also, I had a, a very kind gentleman uh, sent this bottle to me. Um, and it's a Springbank single cask burgundy, burgundy age. So, it's one single burgundy cask. But I don't see where it says burgundy anywhere. So I might be lying to you. No, it says first bill burgundy. So I have the cask strength burgundy right here, which I acquired recently as well. Uh, I haven't posted my review on this one. They're both 12 years old. This one's 53.5% and the single cask is 57.5%. So I might do a head to head to see what the difference is, or I might just review them separately and, Tell you guys which one I think is better. Uh, Bourbon Journey, you're asking what kind of glasses they are. These are um, glasses made by Final Touch. And like I said before, they're just like a really nice glass for a, a barrel proof, a cast strength whiskey. They almost look like a like a wine like decanter. Mm -hmm. You can nice. see like how big the surface area is at the bottom. It's really good for, I think, I mean, for letting whiskey breathe a lot, a lot more than you would in a Clinkaren. Mm -hmm. This one, um, it reminds me a little bit of the Kentucky Owl, 
Right. Uh, yeah. A little bit. Um, almost like a bubblegum sweetness in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's opening up a lot more. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could probably let this thing sit for an hour. Yeah. I'm wondering if we should add a drop just to see what mm. changes. I brought my eyedropper. There you go. Kentucky limestone water. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to do it. So I added about four drops. I don't think it'll do much, but. You get more on the nose right away. Whiskey Throttle's calling these copycat glasses. These are better than Glencairn's, in my opinion. I mean, the opening is the same. You just get more surface area at the bottom. So good. So before I tried this, I was thinking, how's this going to stack up to other, you know, really good rye whiskeys? And I've had the Sazerac 18. I think it was a 2010 bottling. That was the best rye whiskey I've ever had. Yeah. We'll see. I'll save my judgment on this. So it gets a full chance to open up, but yeah, I almost I mean, want to put it down, start something else for a bit, and go back and go back to it because those were uh, pretty hefty pours anyway. <laughs> so, but hey, you heard him, hefty pour. <laughs> you know what? I think these ones are also like the, if you go by the uh, your same rule for the other ones, you're gonna end up pouring more on this one. That's true. Yeah. So if you pour to like. If you pour it to the bulge, which is like a standard pour for a glass like this, it's probably two ounces or more, right? Yeah, I would say two ounces. Well, um, let's give away one of the samples. Yeah. I'm giving away two samples tonight, two one-ounce samples. Um, so let's give away one right now. Sounds good. Should we do like a tri trivia question? Yeah, we can do that. First to respond. Okay. Get ready. First person to answer correctly will win a one ounce sample. I will ship it to you. What is the nickname for this release? Interesting. It says it right on the label. It says it right on the label. What's the nickname for it? There it is, match and drum. You got it, bud. Big time batch. It is called the big time batch. Nice. Says it right here. Very nice. Uh, focus. There it is. Big time batch. Congratulations, Mash. Nurik's probably excited about that. So um, Peter I'm gonna, was I'm close. Out. Peter was pretty close. He said, "Big batch." So um, Jason, just um, message me through Instagram or whatever. You can go to um, my email is sippersocialclub at gmail. Send me your address. I'll send this out to you. Oh, oh. There you go. Hold on. I'm going to fill this up to the top. Ooh, too much. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting a full pour. Right now, you gotta try to close that lid because there you go. All right, all right, Jason. Well done, buddy. There it is. We've already labeled it for you. Full ounce coming your way. I'm gonna do one more later. All right. So we're gonna, oh, you know what? 
So we're going to set these down for a bit, let them open up a bit yeah. more. Um, yeah. I poured myself a Macallan Edition 4. I've never had it before. There you are, my friend. And I'm going to pour myself. Well, you know what? I'll take requests. What do you guys think I should pour over here? You know what? I'm going to do one of these bad boys. Bal Blair or Ab Aberfeldy? What do you guys think? Oh, wow. This edition of four is nice. It almost smells like um, like cookies. Mm -hmm. You get that? The nose is, is really nice. So no one's responded. Nobody nobody cares. Nobody Rob, cares. <laughs> just <pick a> drag. <laughs> Jason Fisk says Aberfeldy. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> All right. It was a fresh glass, all right. So have you guys had the addition for yet? Does, so does it smell like cookies to you? It smells like cookies to me. Most of these guys are saying about there, but I, I already uh I already picked up the Aberfeld, you guys, sorry. I'll do a Bal Blair as well later on. Kind of going all over the place with our palettes tonight. So like smell this for a sec. So this is like super briny for some reason. I, I've, I've only ever had one other Aberfeldy. I've only had the 12. Um, but it's got this brininess to it. Honey, like salted honey almost. You know what I get on here is like that gunpowder kind of smokiness that I got on the um, Balvini 25 single barrel. Mm. Yeah, that's that's true. Actually, it does have some about any uh, characteristics. You think so? On the nose, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I like this edition for it. This is different than almost all the other ones. Yeah, it is very different. I feel like it's a bit younger, but I mean, you've heard enough reviews that it's you're you're well, you're a big boy. You'll make your own decisions. I don't pick up like necessarily like the McAllen like house style character that you do on other ones. Yeah. No, you don't get as much McAllen characteristic. So when my buddy when my buddy brought this back from Florida, <clears throat> he brought over this Highland Park 15 and an 18 year old Kirkland Space Side. Okay. Uh, we tried them all head to head. Kirkland is the um, Costco brand. That's right. Blended? No, it was a single malt from oh. Space Side, yeah. Okay. And it was 18 years old, shared cask. Uh, Douglas Lang had to do with like the selection. Mm -hmm. And they were all so similar to me. I was like, what the hell is going on? And it was I, like, normally I could pick a McAllen out from a thousand different drafts. Yeah. But uh, this one's not like that. No, this does not smell or taste like a typical. McAllen, but it's good. You get a lot of like shortbread cookies. Wow, the nose on this is Bacon actually spice. outstanding. Did you ask if everyone's drinking tonight? No, I have not actually. You guys sipping anything good? What's everybody else drinking tonight? And I will get to the Bal Blair as well, guys. But uh, we want to finish up the review with drinking and maybe scoring. Or I'll, maybe I'll score this Booker's Rye. Um, okay, so Dram Dude saying Kirkland Brand is bottled by Alexander Murray. Maybe that's why I got mixed up because he's another very common independent bottler. Mm -hmm. Little Octomore 8.4, nice. Oh, Elijah Craig 18. I haven't had any Elijah Craig, um, anything over 12, I guess. And that's really good. Red Breast 12, nice. Ardbeg, Ardbeg 1, what does that mean? Oh, 10 maybe, Ardbeg 10. 
<laughs> this Aberfeld is like phenomenal. You gotta try it next. Jason's drinking the Mac 12. <laughs> Throttle's waiting for the mailman. Throttle, I'm sure you got some whiskey around here. Oh no, he's he's working in a in a dry camp. Although he went live, so no, he's back. He's back now for a little bit. I don't know how long. Oh, okay. So Daniel's got to take off. Whenever a man leaves that quickly, can only mean one of two things. <laughs> Wow, you guys are making a lot of good stuff here. Kill Home and PX. A 2014 Lefroy quarter cast. Kentucky Owl Batch 2. Mm. Daniel's back until he goes to Scotland. He's going to Scotland soon, which is oh, pretty that's awesome. Nice, man. Yeah. Daniel, doing some uh, distillery tour tours over there? That is really, really nice, though. Jameson, 12-year-old from 1980. Danny. Nice, man. So this, I, I like this McAllen Edition 4. I like it better than 3, that's for sure. Do you? Yep. A lot of people do. A lot of people do. I uh, I personally really like the three. I think the three was my second favorite of the of the batch mm -hmm. of the group. I mean, this Aberfeld is something else. Yeah, let's, let's drop one. Oh, well, I want some of that Aberfeld. Yeah, you gotta have some of that. Aberfeld was kind of one that, like the 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 entry levels are twelve year old, right? <laughs> Yeah, and they're all 40%. So when Bob Blair grabbed a hold of it, they're like, you know what? Let's do a cast strength. That's the thing about like distilleries that bottle stuff, you know, at 40% or 43. You grab an independent bottle or suddenly, you know, they're they're giving it to you at cast strength. And you're like, this is completely different. Like, why yeah. wouldn't Bob Blair release some of this stuff? Yeah. At least at like a higher percentage. Yeah. Bob Blair does it more than Aberfeldy does. Bubbler will have their like single casks. There, they have a few single casks. Right, actually. but yeah, but Albert Feldy is usually just like all forty percent. Yeah, yeah, up to the twenty-one, it's forty percent. Um, these are both. So the Aberfeldy and the Bubbler are first fill sherry casks. But like, if you had them side by side, you would not be able to tell that they're both first fill sherry casks just because mm -hmm. they're so drastically different. Yeah, they're both twenty-four years old, and I think that's why. Gordon McPhail did this um, because the packaging, everything looks the same. The dates, just the ABV is different. And like the drams are just completely different. They're so different. <laughs> Go have is asking if that briefcase, uh, if you take that thing to work with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just that's <laughs> what you need to get through a day of teaching public school. 25 bottles of booze. Yeah, you know what? I probably am not going to review this Aberfeldy until the new year because it's getting already way too hard to pick a whiskey of the year this year. And if I ended up reviewing this Aberfeldy, I think it would be up there. It's that good. I'd like to know what you think. It's been a good year for um, for whiskey. I've had some incredible whiskeys this year, like top notch. Here, try that. <clears throat> Did I show them the bottle? Give it, let them look at that bottle. Sure. So the wife is home. The baby's still crying a little bit. A little bit irresponsible of me to. <laughs> Typical dad drinking in his basement. Kids are upstairs crying. <laughs> <laughs> so 1993, both are 24 years old. Uh, both are first fill sherry casks. This one's got a little bit of a higher ABV. Um, uh, 58.7, whereas that's 51.6. And the bottling date on this one is 2102. So February 21st, 
2018. This one is also February, no, February 20th, 2018. Um, so I find that interesting. Very interesting, actually. Kind of like like the updated label bottle that uh, yeah. Connoisseur's Choice went with. The old ones look pretty dated. This is nice. So it's not just the Connoisseur's Choice that are um, using this new bottle and label. It's the whole line. So they okay, so like the the cast the cast strength line. Oh well. yeah, I don't even know. If, I haven't seen the new cast strengths yet, but um, yeah, they changed up the whole thing. Throttle's asking for prices on how that. much? I think I saw the Aberfeldy for in the three hundreds. Um, the Balbler is a little bit more, depending on where you buy it in. Certain locations, it's up to four twenty, maybe a little bit less in some places. Not cheap. The Balbler is more expensive for some reason. First fill, sherry pungent. Oh, it's good. It's beautiful. I think I might have to buy a second bottle of that. <clears throat> Mouth coating. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. So, um, Richie Z is asking us both. Uh, what are your top fave Canadian whiskeys of this year? Um, well, the, the, the best whiskeys from Canada are coming out in the next month or two. Yeah, so, so we tried the entire 2018 Northern Border collection, which was the Wiser's 35, the new Lot 40 cast strength, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. Um Canada 2018, which is essentially like, which is Wiser's product, right? Yeah. And two other ones that I can't remember. Gooderham. The Gooderham Warts, the uh, 11, 11 grain, so 11, the called. 11 grain one. Basically. And Pike Creek. Uh, yeah. You say that right? No. Um, I would, I would imagine that my favorite from this year is going to be the Lot 40 cast strength, 11 years old. Just because out of everything that this released, that's probably still the best, I would think. Yeah. I, honestly, I don't like to make that judgment call until I'm sitting down with the bottle. Sure. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. um, we'll see. Uh, it's it's still up in the air. There's a bunch that are coming out. The 41-year-old Canadian Club, the Wiser's 35-year-old this year, the Law 40, like Jeremy had said. Um, there's a bunch. So Yeah, so all those are coming out next month. Like a month or a month and a half from now, we'll have all that stuff. Yeah. So very soon you will get the answer to that question, Richie. But this Aberfeldy is something else. It's ridiculously good. I'm going to go back to the, the rye. Mm -hmm. So Jason Fisk asks, uh, oh, first of all, I want to say hi to my buddy P-Boss. What's up, buddy? Um, you met P Boss before. His name's Paulo. Yeah, yeah. What's up, man? Um, why is this thirty-five cash strength? Is it's not cash strength. Not cash strength. It's it's fifty percent again. Yeah. Um, it was rumored to be cash. Strength. It was supposed to be cash strength. Yes. But then I guess marketing jumped in and said, "Hey, we can make another thousand bottles if we decide to, you know, drop the ABV five percent." So that's what they did. And I wasn't the biggest fan of last year's 35. I thought it was good. But again, it's like when you're drinking a 35 year old whiskey, you're expecting so much out of it. Yeah. And it just, it just came up short. I mean, same with, um, the CC 40 year old, you're getting, you're drinking a 40 year old whiskey and you're expecting like, you know, top, top stuff. And it was good, mm -hmm. but, not quite expectations for for 40 year old whiskey yeah i mean um 
that barrel pull, man, like I can never see Canadian whiskey the same way. See, yeah. Uh, now it's, it yeah. just hurts my heart a little bit. Like I wish all of you guys could try that barrel pull because it's just it's something else. It was something else. Yeah, and even something. even with the the lot forty cat strength, um, a couple guys from Toronto Whiskey Society went to the distillery and they did some barrel pulls of some really nice casts, and they still boast about how good that was. And even at the the release of the lot forty cast strength, they're like, oh, that barrel pull was still better because like that that specific barrel. Obviously, when they pull out a barrel for you to try. You're like, all right, let's give them like, you know, one of the good ones. Yeah. And it's not being, you know, blended together I mean, with everything else that they're throwing into yeah. it. So yeah, because whenever they do some blending, they're like, okay, let's choose a bunch of really good casts that are gonna mask the fact that this cask here is garbage, but we need to get rid of it. Yeah. And this cask here is probably not so good, so we need to get rid of that too. Um the barrel pull Apollo's asking, it was the the Canadian Club forty one year old, but unadulterated right like just so wait i'm assuming that that's going to be like they're 42 so they have i'm assuming like they bottled everything that's coming out already right so they have it they that was the assumption last year that they bottled all of it but that's not like they have a ton left okay so they have enough left like i said for a 42 43 or 44 45 right and then they're gonna go to 50. Okay. so well that's the the initial plan but i don't think um Anything's confirmed yet. So this is really good. Graham's asking if you know if the CC41 was all corn like the 2017 was. It's not all corn, but the specs have not been disclosed yet. So wait and see, I guess, on that one. I think 10% might be something different. I'm not sure. Yeah. Peter White saying you only buy the lot 40 cast strength. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm with you with that, Peter. Um, the lot forty cast strength is a definite buy for sure. I really like that Pike Creek when we uh, tasted it at the distillery. I thought it was I don't know, but we we tend to think differently, and then we tried them both later. And I don't know. honestly, the Pike Creek, um, what is it? Is it a ten year old or twenty one? No, I know, but what's the what's the what's the, the entry the regular level? Ten, yeah, it's 10. ten. It's really nice stuff. Which is aged in uh, rum barrels. Yep. For thirty five dollars Canadian. Excellent, excellent buy. Mm -hmm. I got a bottle of that on the shelf. Actually, that was the uh, the girlfriend's pick. She liked that a lot. It's honestly the ten year old is is phenomenal stuff yeah. for what, like for what you're paying. That's the thing. Like people knock Canadian whiskey, and yeah, there's that nine point zero nine percent rule. If they're gonna if they're gonna advertise what that nine point zero nine percent rule is, the fact that they can call it whatever age they want and not have to put the youngest whiskey in there is kind of annoying, but if they embrace it and just, you know, this is a no age statement whiskey, but it's got predominantly 50 year old whiskey in it or whatever, you know what I mean? Like 90% 50 year old whiskey at it in it. Who's going to balk at that? You know what I mean? Like nobody's going to say, Oh my God, these guys are mm -hmm. doing something terrible. No, they are improving the whiskey with that 9.09% .09 rule. That's why they're doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think so. Um, they're not doing it to like cut corners or, or whatever else a lot of people assume when it comes to Canadian whiskey. No, they're doing that 9.09% .09 to give it a flavor that maybe it's lacking. So uh, for the Wiser's 35 year old, for example, uh, it's rumored that there's 9.09% um, lot 40, 14 year old in there. Really? That's a rumor. I don't know if that's 100% true, but that's a rumor. So let's say that is true. If at, if that 35-year-old is not as good, 100% corn, and it's much better when you add that 14-year-old lot 40. Sure. If they're disclosing it, if they're transparent, then who cares? You know what I mean? Like That's the only thing I think people are calling for is that transparency. Because we've both stated that there's no age statement whiskeys that we like better than almost any other whiskey. Absolutely. You know? And, um, yeah, my next review will come out, um, tomorrow. If I have time to read to edit it is, um, the entire Ardbeg core range, 10 year old, NO, um, Yugadel and Corey Brecken. I kind of just talk about age statement whiskey in, in that review and kind of, 
how I'm not big on what the age of the whiskey is stated on the front of the label. I'm more of, is the quality justified by the price? Mm -hmm. but that's the only question you need to answer. Is this whiskey up to what they're charging for it? Regardless of if it has an age statement or if it doesn't. Because you can get it, you can get age statement whiskey that's a really old whiskey. And it doesn't mean it's good, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're right. Absolutely. I mean, I've been more disappointed by older whiskeys than not. Sure. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, a lot of 25 year old whiskeys have disappointed me rather than me say, like, this is the best whiskey I've ever had. I have more pleasure out of opening up a cast strength 12 year old Springbank and it being one of the best drives I've ever had, spending $80 on that or $90, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's just this whole conception of age equals quality. It's going to go eventually. And I hope it goes soon because that's just not true. Yeah. It's not true. Um, that Booker's Rye is fantastic. So Rob just drank his entire dram when we were just talking. Yeah. I'm going back to this now. The richness is just yeah. cranked up hardcore on this. It's, it's finally starting to open up. It's got this like beautiful like creaminess, oh, like buttery. Yeah, honestly, it rem Did you try the the Kentucky Owl, the eleven year old that I had? That no, time? was it eleven so. years old? Yeah, it's eleven, right? Do you know what batch it was? The batch one. Batch one, because um, I forgot who is drinking. Someone's drinking batch two right now. Batch two apparently is not as good as batch one, but I would say the. For me, at the at this moment, judging only based on this one dram, which bear in mind that's not entirely fair. Graham, thank you so much for that. Graham, virtual cheers. dram, cheers, buddy. Um, judging on that, I'm gonna say that it's neck and neck for the Michter's toasted barrel and this. Okay, I like you tried the Michter's, right? Love the Michter's toasted barrel. The, Michter, the really Michter's good, is yeah. bonkers. I don't, I don't know how old that is. I'm assuming it's probably seven, eight years old, maybe right. a little bit older. Touch. Yeah. Um, then you have the Kentucky Owl just under that. Like those three are neck and neck. Mm -hmm. Like I think they're all fantastic. So it's yeah. it's very hard. I mean, that's one dram. My entire perception could change when that's halfway down the bottle. You know what I mean? And it's in its money spot. Yeah. Uh, Eric Waite saying age is relevant to climate. Yeah. Absolutely. And the yeah. Quality of, yeah. Yeah. Look so, at like um, Cavalan and how yeah. well their whiskey age is at six, seven years. Or I'm like, show them that. So this bottle here, this Amro Portnova, and Peter White can attest to this is probably one of the most rich whiskeys you'll ever have in your life. It's just sweet and filled with like different types of red fruits and like just incredible, super hot, but it's probably only about four years old. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's five years old. Probably not though. Um, it's fantastic stuff. And honestly, you guys got to check that out. Amru or uh, we got uh, another Imagine drum. Saying, at least I can do giving away a drink. Ah, hey. Cheers, man. That's a thank you to Jeremy right there. But Jason, thank you so much, buddy. Really appreciate that virtual draft. Guys, check out the Mash and Drum if you haven't already. Guy knows his stuff, and he, he's reviewing a lot of uh, bourbon. He's actually holding some back, building the channel, getting ready for when you guys are ready for the big the big boys, the big guns. Uncle Habs is saying, any updates on the December event? Okay, so... My coins have not been processed yet. I apologize. Um, the logo has been made. It's ready to go. I just haven't put it through yet just because I'm moving. Ask Jeremy. Behind what you guys don't see right now is just a, a <laughs> shit ton of boxes. Um, we're moving in two weeks, and it's crunch time. I'm crazy busy with all three of my jobs, one in, one being Whiskey in the Six. Um so the coins are coming, but that probably won't happen until November. Um, the December party is a very likely go. I just got to get confirmation from the, the company that wants to host it. Um, if they decide to go ahead and do that, then we're going to do that there. Otherwise, we might do it at like a bar like the Caledonian or something like that. I'm just going to give them a call and see if we can do that. Um, 
it's probably going to be pretty intimate. I don't anticipate getting a lot of people there, but whoever can make it is more than welcome. If you want to come from another country, another province, another city, whatever, you are more than welcome to come. I just don't know um, how upper echelon this party is going to be. It's just, it probably is just going to be a bunch of guys having a jam together. We'll be know? there. We'll be drinking whiskey. Exactly. What more do you need? You know? Yeah. So uh, I'll try to bring something special that night. And I'll, um, I'll bring something a little, uh, little nice too. Yeah. I figure if everybody, if, if we bring something special, I'm sure other people are going to do the same. Um, I've been promised a couple companies that decided that they're going to come and, and, you know, um, pour jams for us for free, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so there's gonna f there's a few companies that are gonna be doing that. <clears throat> so we'll see. We'll see what it's like, but I think it's gonna be pretty cool. <laughs> Paul is saying it's gonna be the party of the year. <laughs> I'm honestly I'm looking forward to it. I really hope I can let let this get this to go. If I can't do it by December, it's gonna happen by early New Year. So I think December is a good time for it. I think. We said roughly December 28th, so mark it in your calendars. Hopefully, we can make that day stick. I'm hoping. So now with this whiskey that has opened up, I'm getting like banana bread, like carrot loaf, a lot of like baked goods, mm -hmm. a lot of baking spices. Yeah. I've always – I found it very interesting – some water the old perception of rye because rye is known to be this like a little bit harsher grain compared to corn compared to barley um which makes no sense to me because that's all sweet goodness to me like oh, it's just yes. um it's just really nice yeah so i know when this has this chance to settle down after i pour some more out for you guys for the next uh, giveaway. I know when this thing opens up, it's just gonna be, you can tell it's gonna be amazing. So a few of these guys are saying New Year's Eve party. <laughs> yeah. That might work, that might work. Well, like then, we're gonna, <laughs> then it goes from like, you know, let's have a couple grams to, to like, let's party. Let's like get a forklift to carry <laughs> half of these guys out of here. <laughs> Yeah, New Year's uh, New Year's isn't like a good time for me to drink expensive whiskey. It's a time to uh, to drink a lot of. Yeah, I don't. Well, you start with some nice stuff, and then it just gets sloppy after yeah, that. Okay. Then like Crown Royal Black <laughs> starts to taste like it's Booker's <laughs> Rye. <laughs> oh, Jason, you're gonna love this, man. So for the second giveaway, how did you want to do it? Hmm. Do you have a su suggestion? I was just going to give another trivia question. I think we should do a super social club trivia question. Oh. Just so that we make oh. sure that everybody watching right oh. now is at least a subscriber, okay. which I think they are for the most part. Uh, but if you if you haven't already, guys, make sure you're subscribed to Super Social Club because it's pretty badass and Jeremy's doing an incredible job. Um, but, yeah, uh, maybe we can talk about – the ABV of the last whiskey that you reviewed or something of that sort. <laughs> it needs to be something I can uh, answer. Okay, yeah, I know what it was. Um, something, let's do, let's do two reviews ago. What was that? Don't say it out loud. <laughs> do I remember two reviews ago? Last review was um, Yamazaki12. That was a, uh, a Instagram poll question. I did that one over the uh, Kyushu. Everyone knows the ABV of that, though. That's yeah, that's too question. easy. That's an easy question. The review before that was, um, they're all kind of just blended now. I've, I've right. shot a couple of reviews. And, okay. Okay, I know what it was. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Peter White, 43%. Yeah, that's not the question, though. But yeah, you're right. It was that. <laughs> <laughs> Peter White, get your, get, your, get your keypad ready, buddy. I'm not going to, okay. I'm not going to do another question about bookers, because... I don't even know my own channel, so I don't even know the answers to that. I need something that I can tangibly sh read, and that's that's okay. The I, can I get a, can I give a question then? Okay. So I I spoke about two spring banks uh, in this episode. If you're paying attention, so you heard um, the spring bank burgundy that's not single cask. What's the ABV of that spring bank burgundy? This is gonna be tough. 
Do you have this here? Yeah, it's right behind you. Oh, okay. Spring Bank is this one. What's the ABV of this? Is the question. Oh, yeah. We got some people thinking. We got some people thinking. Oh, oh, that's Paolo, it. Paolo, you got it. Paolo, you got it. Fifty-three and a half. Fifty-three and a half is correct. Some guys are just slow to press enter, <laughs> but Jam Dude and Peter White both got it. Also, all right. Um, because I like all three of you guys a lot. Um, because you guys are so close. Paul is going to get the Booker's Rye. Um, and then I'm going to give you guys, uh, Dram Dude and Peter White, something else. There you go. Okay. Awesome. All right. I'm going to try to pour this out and we'll see if I can do it without spilling some stuff. So, Peter White, I know right now is like really upset because he's the biggest Rye fan that I know. Um, Peter. I know Paulo very well, and you have some single malt stuff that he probably would trade this dram for. So, um, Peter, hit me up, man. I'll um, I'll sample swap with you. I'm sure you have some stuff that I haven't tried before that I'd love to try. If you want a sample of this, uh, message me. We can figure out a trade for sure. There you go. Everybody's happy. And that goes for anyone. Any one of you guys, if you want a sample of this, um, hit me up. Let me know. We can swap a sample. I'm very happy to do that. You guys are great supporting my channel. I love you guys' comments. I love the back and forth. Peter there seemed you go. like he was first. There it is. Did it? Why does it show up differently on ours? <clears throat> it says in our in in order for us, it's P Boss, Dram Dude, then Peter White. Peter seemed like he was first. Uh, still, I was first. I'm not sure. I don't know why. Maybe on yours it says it's your that you were first. Does that does everybody else see Peter as first? If enough people say yes, then should I check my phone? Maybe there's a way I can. Check. Um, regardless, Peter, like let me know and uh, we'll swap. Um, I'm sure you got some stuff uh, that I'm interested in. Well, he does have some Michters toasted there. <laughs> Tram dude's like, I'm first on mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's see Peter. Vizzo. Wow. I don't know. Matthew Party says he sees Peter White first. We'll go with what the way with the way we saw it because yeah. I guess if you guys are seeing different ones, it might have been like split second. You know, it was probably all at the exact right. same time. Yeah. Um, P Boss is saying that he his was first as well. That's weird. That is super shame. That makes well, sorry guys. I, I apologize for that, but yeah, we saw it as um, his boss is first. Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, Jason from the Mash and Drum is saying that he will send us samples of Four Roses 130th mm. anniversary bourbon. If you're interested, yeah, like we wouldn't be. <laughs> that goes without saying. <laughs> Jason, you're the man. <laughs> I'm gonna throw something in your in your package when uh, Jeremy sends it over as well. Um, yeah, I can check my live, I guess, from here. When you guys pour this out, let it sit for an hour. If you got a coin, throw it over top. But yeah, this thing needs to open up a lot. Like, even when I'm just smelling it now, it's different than even 10 minutes ago. How about a sample of... Oh, so he has, yeah, because he just picked up the bottle of uh, Four Roses 125th mm, nice. anniversary. Dish. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. If you, Peter, what, you want to swing up uh, one ounce for one ounce, I would gladly do that. I'm going back to my Valblair over here. You know what the good thing about not splitting bottles is? Drinking as much as you want. That I get as much as I want. <laughs> How many times have you heard this guy be like, well, I got to like drink this down to half and then give it to someone else? <laughs> like, uh, so, like, the guys that I usually do that with are Jeremy, my buddy Marco, Paulo, who's in the chat, and Peter. So, no coincidence, obviously, those guys know exactly what I have and probably uh, knew exactly what the ABV of that whiskey was. Um, but, which goes to, I mean, Dram Dude's going to get a dram of something. I'll, I'll talk to him later and see what he wants, but. 
I think I like that Aberfeldy so far. I think I like the Aberfeldy better than the um, than the Bubbler. original than the original. No. Yeah. Than, than this, this Bubbler. Bubbler. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Not the original. That original was bonkers. Yeah. The nose on the Aberfeldy is like something different. You know, it's like special. Something I've never experienced. And this rye, though. Ooh. That rye is really nice. And then when you go back to it, it's like grassy hay, like sweet honeyed. Like there's a Greek dessert. What's it called? Um, there's a Greek dessert that reminds me of what this smells like. Uh, Graham Young is getting a Bowbler 1990 to match up nearly to Rob. Yeah, you know what? That stuff is phenomenal. You tried that, right? Which one? The 25 year old. Well, I used to have a bottle of it. I think I shared some with you. Bowbler? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Can't remember. Baklava. There you go. Big dog on it. Oh. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, the rye has a nice, like, almondy, or maybe not almond, but like walnuts, and then this honey. Baklava smell. Like it's like pastry and honey. And it's very like baked goods. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Eric Waite got it too. Baklava. Yeah, yeah. A bunch of these guys are jumping. I'm There's like, a, guys, this is not a trivia question. <laughs> We're not going by. They're like, where's my, where's my ounce of liquor? <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah. in about... I say we, we sign out in about three, four minutes because the Scotch four dummies will be jumping in shortly. I think we hit 40 tonight, which is not bad for me making a major error and not announcing it on YouTube. We announced it also on, on Instagram. Insta, yeah. but it's a different thing because these guys can just like follow the link after, right? right? So it, it makes a difference. Um, so my apologies, but then again, we had some good time, and, and your odds of winning a sample are a lot better when there's less people in the chat, right? So, there you go. So, I'm gonna get you guys a, a look at this bottle again because I just think it's beautiful. Yeah, and it's nice. The new gold labeling, the like, just the shape of the bottle. It's got cool. that nice, like, thick cork. Yeah, thick wood cork. Yeah. Oh, the S four D stream is canceled internet problems oh well i guess we're going on forever then i guess we <laughs> i guess we gotta fill the void do we not <laughs> i think that's the way it works tom r thanks for the information oh tom r how's it going buddy what's up man how did you enjoy that uh the rum review i i know you've been wanting to see a cuban rum review for a while so finally i was able to deliver he so uh, quick I, I mentioned it in my review this week but um a while back Tamar dropped a, a huge $50 super chat and said, please buy a rum, preferably Cuban, mm. because they, in this in the States, they can't really oh, access Cuban. That's the one you got up there. Yeah, that's it it's might not one. be a Havana? There. Check if it's in the – oh, yeah, that's it right there, yeah. It's delicious. You're going to love it. So this rum is rumored to be close to 12 years old, but it's, it's not – it's an annoying statement. But really, it doesn't matter because it doesn't smell or taste like any rum I've ever had before. It's phenomenal stuff. And thanks to Peter White, I have that bottle because um, he gave you half of it. Yeah, he gave it to me. And my brother-in-law had brought me back a bottle from Cuba when he went this year. This actually last December. Um, we opened it on Christmas Eve at his parents' house. And needless to say, it didn't make it right. the night. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Triple barrel aged. Yeah. That's really nice stuff. You know what, though? I got to say, this Bal Blair is phenomenal as well. Um, I thought that, I don't know, man. That's really good. That's soup. Like, Look at the color on this. That's 100% natural color. And just to show you the difference, like so is this Aberfeldy, and they're both first fill sherry. But like 
It's hard to tell, I guess. But you can see the difference there, right? Can you? Well, it looks like the one on, on the left is darker. Yeah, the one on the left is much darker, um, in my opinion. I don't know if you guys could pick that up there on the camera. Telex is going to go live in place of the Scotch for Dummies. Okay. Telex usually goes on at 11. Yeah, the color is nuts. Coal oil, yeah, seriously. So the Aberfeldy is lighter in the, uh, on, on camera, and it's lighter in real life. Um, these are both phenomenal, and I'm glad I picked them up. I had to sell a couple things to buy this because uh, I think my wife would have killed me with all the expenses that are going into the new house. Uh, we're, we're doing landscaping, we're painting, we're doing countertops and a whole bunch of other stuff. So, um, And we're buying a bigger house, so it's obviously going to be more expensive. So. Um, no better time to waste the whole budget on scotch, right? Yeah. So, well, what I did was I sold some stuff. Yeah. So that I can afford. See, that's it. it. You know, a little one in, one out rule. That's it. Yeah. Um, that's why you stock up, guys, because sometimes something comes out that you can't afford. Mm -hmm. But then, if you had some backup, yeah, you can get rid of that. Yeah. And then you yeah. are able to afford some. Think stuff. about if you bought like a case of. McAllen edition ones. Uh, that's exactly what I was thinking. And now you can be like, I'll trade you this bottle that I paid a hundred bucks for, for something that's $500. Right. Or more. Or more. Or yeah. more. I mean, a lot of people knock the secondary like, Oh, I hate the secondary market. And yeah, it's unfortunate, but you know what we got to do? Cause Tamar just jumped in. Tamar is my good buddy from Quebec. Um, we have to try something of his. So you get to choose me. Yeah. We got Tamatin 1982. Ben Rick, 30 year old. Glenn Morangi, 1990. Morangi, sorry. Uh, Lafroy, 25 cast strength. Yep. Or Cuddy Stark, Cuddy Sark, 25 year old. Cuddy Sark brings oh, a 25 wait, year old. Wait, there's one more, sorry. And Tomatin, 30 year old. Oh, wow. So apparently, the t out of the Tomatin range, the 82 is like the gem. Okay, well, you know what? Maybe Tomatin then, because. Someone needs to change my mind about Tomat and Whiskey because I've only had their, like, I don't know, what do they have, a 12, an 18? Yeah, 12, 18. Well, they have 20, a few. They have 21. the 14, the 15, 14 port. Excuse me. The, the 14, 14 port. port. That's my favorite. That is my favorite. The 14 port's gang. But the rest of the range, like the rest of the classic range, yeah. I wasn't big on. I don't like the 12. Okay, so Tamar's saying, yes, uh, we don't have much, but we're going to share a little sip each. I'm going to go get two fresh glasses. One sec. Uh, McAllen 25, where you can get some, you can get it at lots of places. Um, stores will have it, although you're going to pay a lot. Going rate for McAllen 25 right now is 2200 No, it's not that much. It's like 1500 US, 1200 US. You, there's... You know, McCallum. If you do the math, it's probably close to 22. Okay. Well, right? Yeah. So, Tamar, we are pouring out a glass in, in honor of you. Thank you so much. Guys, uh, I've been meaning to get to these samples, and it wasn't until recently when uh, I found the box that my wife had packed um, for a while. So, we get to try some of this tonight. Do you want to give a send off to this Booker's Rye and say what you um, you're gonna mark yeah. it? Honestly, I'm gonna mark that a 91. I think that's phenomenal stuff. I think um, I don't remember what I marked the Kentucky Owl, but I think it was pretty close, mm -hmm. probably a 90. So that would make sense. The Michters is around. The, actually, the Michters when I did my American Whiskey Month, the Michters was my favorite the of the entire barrel yeah rye toasted yeah. barrel rye. Uh, Peter White says that the regular uh, barrel proof rye is very similar. Mm -hmm. I haven't tasted that, so I don't know. But um, that that mixer still might like hold a special place in my heart. But um, look for the review for this for me. It will probably come out later on this month. I'm gonna let the bottle kind of open up a bit. I feel like it's gonna get better and better and better. So check my review for the score. Yeah, and then if Jeremy decides to edit this down to yes, I will. 
Um, every time that me and Rob do a live, I'll take it and I'll edit it down um, and just kind of highlight. We did a, we did an epic three hour with the Pappy Van Winkle 23. Yeah. And I put it down to like 35 minutes or whatever. So yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's really nice. What is this one? This is the Albert. No, no. <laughs> Eric Waits giving a, giving away a one ounce pour of NyQuil <laughs> to anyone who can answer the next. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> is that the cast strength uh, NyQuil? Barrel proof? So I'm going to put my Balblair aside for a second and I'm going to work on this Tomatin. Um, so this is the Tomatin 19. What? 1982. 57%. Um, so this is what, like almost 30, what is it, 35 years old? I think it was bottled in 2014 okay. or 2015. Uh, Tamar, if you know the answer to that, can you just put it in the chat below? Um, this is rated as one of the best demands. I, as by the as, nose, I mean, you get this really nice sweetness right away. Yeah. And I, I was lucky enough to, I mean, I, I drank most of the sample before we got to dip into it, unfortunately, but, uh. Fortunately for me, I did that. Um, Peter White might know how old this is. It, it's night the tomato nineteen eighty two fifty seven percent. Yeah, it's pretty delicious. Oh, wow. It's like all like fresh tropical fruit. Yeah. But I'm getting like this huge hit of like blood orange. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Like pineapple, orange, um, like mango. So oh, limited man. release, 560 barrels or bottle, sorry. Uh, bottle number 488. What's the date on it? Oh, this is a seven hundred dollar bottle. Fuck. So only in Nova Scotia price. because um, everywhere else that's probably double the price at least. Mm. This is unreal. Okay, so yeah, I was like, change my mind, Madden, and you have this. <laughs> this is incredible. This is phenomenal. It's like a lot of distilleries. It's like, like we were discussing before. Yeah. You drink their entry level stuff at forty percent ABV, and then you try. Is this an independent bottle? No, this is tonight. Official release. Yeah. Um, so two thousand fourteen, likely. Okay. Man, that's good. No mention of bottle date. Um, Peter White saying probably two thousand fourteen. I think he's right because I think, from when I did my research, that's probably what I got. But this is phenomenal. It's I hate reviewing and like marking on one dram, but I mean that's that's just really good stuff. Yeah, Master Drum saying he's amazed when he gets pineapple. Um, that Yamazaki twelve that I did, that pineapple note in that one was just so it gave it the good mark for me. Love that. You know what, like. I find pineapple is synonymous almost with like a development of sweetness after that pine note. So like you get this like a little bit of pine, but then it develops into this like fruity like sweetness. Interesting. Please try the 30. It's his favorite ever, he's saying. Oh wow. And that 30. If I'm not mistaken, it's still the old bottling, which goes for like very reasonable prices in most places. Yeah. yeah, like crazy reasonable. Honestly, the most distinct um, coconut flavor I've ever got was in the Glen Going 12 year old. Glen Going 12 year old has this like punch in the face of coconut mm. that I, I couldn't get enough of. And I crushed that bottle and like, record time like that bottle they sent me a bottle of it with a mini like two 200 milliliter bottle of the 18 and i had already bought and reviewed the glenguin 18 mm -hmm. um 
so I used that bottle to do a head to head with the Tomatin 18. And then uh, the 12 year old I reviewed on its own. Yeah. And it's just like coconut. Like, have you tried it? No. It's phenomenal. I, I love 12 year old whiskey, honestly. Like, guys, you don't have to spend your money on crazy expensive high end, says the guy that always does that um, <laughs> whiskey because. <laughs> Honestly, 12-year-old whiskey, you can get some gems. You really can. Absolutely. Yeah. 450 for the for the 30-year-old. Um, Brian, we got this Booker's. I got this. Um, it was a lottery win. So um, raffle win. Tamar, we're gonna we're gonna pause on the on the 30 just because I don't know how much more alcohol I can handle if I gotta go to sleep and work in the morning and <laughs> And I, I still have a dram poured here. So, so that's, that's Madden. Wow. wow, that was good. That was phenomenal. Honestly, I suppose I'd give that an A+. Plus. I'm not going to give a numeric mark because well, it's, that, it's that a, takes a little bit more. It's without a doubt like a, a low 90s for sure. I mean, yeah. Yeah, like easy low 90s. Yeah. And if with more time, probably yeah. could go up. Yeah. Like when you – I think we're, for our scoring, it's about the same. Like when, you, when you're approaching that mid-90 point, it's when you're getting like the epic, epic levels of yeah. whiskey. Like I've only tried three whiskeys, maybe four that have hit like the 93, 94 mark mm -hmm. yeah. for me. And and maybe I'm a little bit too harsh. And like a lot of people think I'm, I'm really easy in my marking because they, they use the American scale for letter grading as their like, you know. Right. So an A plus in, in like in an American, in the American scale is like, a 95 plus right right yeah but the thing with like with marking anyway for me anyway is like every half point above 90 is like a lot because once you get to like you know 93 to 94 well that's like a huge huge difference a lot more than it would be from like let's say 80 to 85 it's almost like a five point bump that little like point is a lot lot more once you get up when you're approaching the 90s the 90 mark yeah, I agree. Um, this Bob Blair smells phenomenal, by the way. Like, I'm in love. Um, I guess that might be Drew. Uh, he's saying that I look bookered. <laughs> um, I'm not book. Honestly, it's been a long week already for me. So I'm exhausted. I'm not going to lie. I'm really tired. Tamara is saying that the Glenn Goyne 30 year old is OMG. Mm. And we're waiting for that to come. Oh, I've been waiting for a long time for that to come. So Glen Glen 25 is amazing. Yeah. I, I really plan on getting at least one bottle of the Glen Glen 30, if not two, if I can. It's, it's really expensive stuff. But So what's happening? Are the Scotch 4 dummies going live? or he, he, It seems like his internet's working now, or unless he's using his phone. No show tonight. The internet got, yeah. So that's the only reason we're on, to be honest with you, because I was planning on going, uh, signing off at what, like 9.45? Oh, well, just before 10, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, we were told that you guys weren't going live anymore, so we stayed on to kind of fill the void for a little bit. Man, this Bob Blair is so good, though. Mm. So be careful what we say at the end of a, a review, though, because we're drinking cast strength whiskey all night. Um, everything starts to taste incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yes and no. I mean, you can you know when this is a bit hotter good, right? than the than the original. I'm gonna say it's a little hotter. It's higher in ABV. It's it's hotter than the than the Aberfeldy though. That's fifty eight percent. Which, uh, yeah, okay. So between these two, these two new, new kind of these two, I like the the Alberfeldy better. Between these, mm -hmm. I agree. And this is less money. It's like a hundred bucks less. Right. Yeah, I would go this one. The old Valblair is something else, though, man. Yes. That 19... What it's is a 93 it? as well. 93. Yeah. It's a 93 as well. It's a year 
it's also 24 years old, but I think it's like right on 24 years old. It's just a better cast. That's it. That's all. Brian Page just jumped in, I think. Got 29 still. Uh, that Aberfeldy, though, I think, I think if I reviewed it this year, it might cause some problems. So I think uh, I'll wait. I'm going more of this. <laughs> just a touch more. Do you want more? Sure, why not? Of course you do. How am I going to say no to that? When am I going to get a chance to drink that again? <laughs> yeah, guys, like this thing, it's it's probably going to be – I'm gonna. I'll reserve my judgment, but it is, without a doubt, one of the best rides I've ever had. It needs time to open up. Like I said, we poured it, Sam, we poured it, we let it sit for – Probably on an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's one of those weird whiskeys. It's like, it's approachable. It's mild, yet it's like bold and like rich at the same time. Yeah. So different though than like. It's almost like a bourbon with like a high rye content more than like a rye with like a low bourbon. Like a yeah, I wonder. I wonder what the. I mean, I know Whiskey Hound was like it's like seventy percent rye, but they don't know the mash bill. Yeah. Um. So Timer's drinking the Black Art Four Point One. Mm, nice. The Four Point One is my favorite so yeah. far. I've only had Four Point One and Five Point One, but. I heard a story about a guy that walked into an Alberta. He walked into an Alberta store, found a two point one on the shelf. A two point one. Two point one on the shelf. He's about to buy it. He's uh, the guy's like, okay, can I go to the bank, grab cash, come back and buy this? Mm. And he's like, sure, no problem. Classic mistake. So, the price was two hundred bucks on this Canadian. on this dusty. Ugh. Yeah, uh, two hundred bucks on this dusty. He walks out to go get the cash, comes back. The guy raises the price to 500 bucks. <laughs> He's like, I was just here five minutes ago and I was going to buy this bottle. It was 200 bucks. He's like, yeah, in that time I did some research and realized that, you know what store this was? Do not shop there. <laughs> Sierra Springs. <laughs> that is garbage. Yeah. Like if you have a price on something and That's it's, it. Like, and someone's like, oh, you want to buy this? Oh, I guess it must be worth something. And then you're like, no, more than double? Set the fucking building on fire. Right? Like, that's bullshit. That's, bull like, it's that's as bullshit yeah. as it gets. So, yeah, fuck those guys. Yeah, that's what I have to say about that. That's, that's awful. Why wouldn't you just play with, like, his credit card? Ugh. He should have just, I don't know. I don't know what the reasoning why he didn't buy it right away. I think he was like, I think, because he doesn't live in Sierra or Airdrie, Airdrie, sorry. So he lives in Edmonton, which is like a four-hour drive. Okay. So I think he went to Airdrie to like do something, stopped in Sierra. Right. He's like, you know what? I'll grab it on my way out of Airdrie. I mean, in fairness, you're not going to expect someone to just no. jack the price on you when you're like, oh, no. I'll buy this. Like, just hold it for me. I'll be right yeah, back. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. That's annoying. I mean, at the LCBO, that's the one benefit is that you never they can't have to worry just about raise that. the price, yeah, and they'll hold it for you for the entire day. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, you need McAllen twenty five. Yeah, we all we all need a McAllen twenty five. We gotta get a McAllen twenty five. Two. We need two McAllen twenty five. You need two. I just I need, need you to open one. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to try it. I want to. I was honestly, I want to buy it just like a sample from Master of Mall just to try it. But it's like for a one ounce, it's still like it's $100, hundred and fifty dollars or something. Yeah, it's too much. So if you had a case of uh, CYBP today, all gone. Yeah, man. What's their price on that, Jason? Do you or uh, yeah? What was, what was their price on that? I've seen it in Alberta for like three hundred bucks a bottle, and people are like. What? Like, are you, aren't you selling this for like retail? So 
Tamar is saying, Rob, should I should I open the McAllen Reflection and would would you trade? I would trade. I would trade for a McAllen Reflection. What, what do you want for it? I would love a McAllen Reflection. Probably a lot. Okay, CYPB for 900 US. That's insane. I see them go, honestly, the... Alberta the, just got a bunch that they were selling for like 100 Canadian. I see them go on the US secondary for 300 to 330. That's about the price. McAllen 25. Uh, apparently, <laughs> so that's actually double the price, to be honest with you, in Ontario anyway. Um, I can probably pick up a McAllen 25. I don't know if if like if push came to shove, maybe maybe eighteen hundred ish. I can get the, the reflections for about eleven hundred. So that's apparently a good price, eleven hundred. That's so crazy money. I still don't see it being worth that much. Apparently, the reflections is not worth that much. Yeah, that's what I hear. Like if you're gonna go with one, go with the twenty-five. They say. Ugh. Why were we in the freaking whiskey game? You know, ten years ago, when we could buy a Macallan twenty-five for like four hundred dollars. Yeah. You know? But then that sounded like insanity back then. I guess you're right. Like even six right. years ago, yeah, four hundred bucks for a, a Macallan twenty-five. Like, but I can buy this twenty-five for a hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Like, yeah. So I, I really wonder if it's that good because I've never tasted it myself. So <sighs> uh, crazy exactly with the Booker's Rye. The Booker's Rye is amazing. Um, it took a long time to open up, like an hour, but once it did, it's just like rich, spice, baking goods, yeah, brown sugar, cinnamon. I gotta say, I'm not. I, I'm not loving this Bal Blair. I like it. I like it a lot, but it's not like four hundred dollars good. You know what I mean? Well, with that Bal Blair, you're gonna always compare it to the other Bal Blair, and the other Bal Blair was like epic. So, yeah. yeah. Sad, sad day. <laughs> sad day when uh, your epic whiskey is not as epic as your other epic whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, this Booker's man, oh my god. Bullmore Black was $94 Canadian. Oh. I think that's the most expensive whiskey or like up there. I don't know what it is. We mean uh, like Black Bullmore, right? That's Black Bullmore. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Is the Bowbler 83 the best core ring? That's Bowbler? a good question. Uh, honestly, have we had enough to know? I have. I, I've had like about half a bottle. Of them. I mean, have you had all the Bowbler official bottlings to know that the ninety three is? The best? Oh no, no. The Bowbler nineteen eighty three is the most fruity of all of them. It's got like, like Jeremy was saying earlier, it's got pineapple, it's got coconut, it's got like the most insane fruit all in one dram. Um, I think for some people that are like sherry bomb seekers, they're not gonna love it obviously because it's a bourbon cask, but it's phenomenal stuff. Like it's, it's quality wise, it's better than the 1990, but people tend to love their sherry aged whiskey. So most people mm -hmm. I think would like the 1990 better. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's, I think quality wise it's better. Saying over here, we're still on the Mac 18 for 350 US. Crazy expensive. Yeah, that's 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 way too much money. Um, you can find Mac 18, the newer ones for 200, 225 is probably what you'd pay on the low end. Anything above that is they're just marking it up. That new bottle is sexy though. I like the new bottle design. So nice. I like the new bottle design. So nice. Yeah, that's really good. I don't know. This book is right, man. It's good. We did a dent in this thing, eh? Yeah. That fill level. Yeah. 
That's a, like a Rob. Day this is one. a this is a Rob day one fill level. <laughs> you're like, where did my whiskey go? <laughs> That's all right. It's going to some good homes. Uh, these two samples going out to the winners tonight. Congrats, yeah. guys. Yeah. Siri, <laughs> big dog said, "There's a great bumper sticker." Shea bomb seekers. Yeah, <laughs> might get some uh, some unwanted honks on that bumper sticker. <laughs> the Mac Twelve Sherry Oak is a classic. It's fantastic. Man, Mac Twelve Sherry Oak. I don't know. People bash McAllen, but you can't bash that bottle. Uh, what converted me? I went to Arizona. I guess it was about a year and a half ago, a year and a bit ago. And at the hotel, like whiskey was just so expensive. Yeah. So I went to a local liquor store and I bought my bottle. So I bought two McAllen 17 year olds cause they were like ridiculously cheap mm -hmm. at about 170 bucks a pop, which for whatever reason, that's like lower than anywhere else in the U S. Um, and then I bought a uh, Bacalta, the Glen Morangy Bacalta at the time, which wasn't released here. And I bought five of the minis of Mac 12. Like the the half bottles? Or? The, no, the minis. Like oh, the, 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 five, the, the five. Oh, the 500. The, no, the 50 sorry, the 50 mil. Yeah, yeah, the 50 mil. Yeah. Um, so I bought five of those to last me five days, one a night kind of shit, right? And it was just like, why the hell would I spend any more than this to get anything else when I have this? It was just it was a good experience. I, I really enjoyed those. And yeah. they were on sale, so I went back and I got a cup of water. The prices on the Mac 12, like, they vary a lot. Um, I've seen it for as low as $45 US. I've seen it for as high as, like, $75 US. So you kind of just got to shop around for it, I guess. But on the low end, you're not going to get a better whiskey for 45 bucks US, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, people are saying great buy. Yeah, 55 at, US, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wish they had it here. If they had, if they sold it in Ontario for a hundred bucks Canadian, I'd still buy it. Yeah, I'd it's, still buy it. It's, it's worth it's worth a hundred bucks Canadian in my opinion for yeah. sure. We well, have a couple of stash now. Oh yeah, yeah, I got lots of it. Yeah. Uh, Jason, rather have the uh, Farkless Twelve. Hmm. The Farkless, I like the Farkless. I think the Seventeen is the best value for money in that range. I did not like the 15 year old. Like, right. I don't know if it was just my bottle. It could have been just my bottle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, I feel like the 12 and then skip the 15, go to 17. Yeah. And then skip 21, go to 25. So when a bottle is corked, you know, because you get this like strong ammonia urine smell. So that 15 year old, it may have been corked. Because that was my first experience with that, like urine smell. Urine. Yeah, it smells like yeah. uh, urinal, like when you're right. in a public bathroom. Of course. I think that's about it. Like, I think um, it's ten twenty-two. You guys, I've heard what we had to say about the the bookers. Yeah. Um, Love the bookers. Good stuff. Honestly, like like I said, that's an A plus. I don't know numerically what I'd give that, but probably at, well, I don't even want to say. I don't know. Um, guys, there's a lot of really cool stuff coming up. I'm not sure if uh, you're interested in it, but let me know in the comments below if you think that a Springbank 12 cast strength versus a Springbank 12 single cask would be a cool little comparison. Um, that's coming up. I have a whole bunch of stuff. You guys saw some of the Aberfeldy and the Balblair, which I didn't actually review tonight, but we tasted, um, ton of stuff coming up. I'm actually getting a Glendronic Grandeur. Someone's asking to see the bottle. Yeah. So I want to know the proof. It's a uh, 68.1 ABV. Yeah. There we go. There it is guys. So the new grandeur I'm getting is the 24 year old, the, the batch nine. So hopefully that, um, 
that's much better than the last one that I got. Jam dude saying, do it. What's he talking about? Do it. <laughs> um, thanks for joining us, guys. That was awesome. I had a good time. Jeremy, thank you for bringing that bottle. That was yeah, I'm gangster. glad I got to share it with, uh, with you and uh, everyone else here. Mm -hmm. Really awesome whiskey. Really, really good. Guys, check out Jeremy on Sipper so Sipper's Social Club. All right, it, there's no apostrophe when you're looking for it, so it's just Sipper's Social Club, three words. Um, pumping out some really cool re reviews, guys. You got to check them out. And then um, you guys can check me out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Patreon. We both have Patreon, actually, if you guys want to check that out. Uh, help keep the lights on here. Help support our very expensive habit of buying really expensive whiskey. Uh, <laughs> um all, all for your benefit, really, because then you guys get to decide whether or not, based on our opinions, if it's worth buying for you. So it's a good investment, I think. Um, other than that? Uh, yeah, subscribe to my channel, uh, Super Social Club. Um, tomorrow I will be releasing the entire uh, art bag range from the 10-year-old, the NO, the Koi of Reckon, and the Yugadel. I'll let you know what one I like the best. That's going to be up tomorrow, so go subscribe. You'll see that one coming up then. Lots of good stuff coming out in October. So, yeah, subscribe, guys. I'm going to review this one. I'm going to let this sit and let it um, oxidize a bit, and you'll see this one probably uh, mid to late October. And there's another special bottle that you have in the rankings. I don't know if you want to share that. <laughs> um, I got a Pappy 15. That is yet to be opened. That will be opened. Okay, this is what we're going to do. When you get your new bar set up in your new place, your first live, All right. Pappy 15, will crack it then, just like we cracked this then. Beautiful. There it is. That works for me. I don't know. <laughs> I hope that works for you guys, but uh, that's going to be an awesome day. Um, let's get Jeremy to 1,000 subscribers so that at least when he goes live, he can get some super chat and uh, help you know support his really expensive habit because sometimes I feel like his might be even more expensive than mine, but, uh, uh, thanks for joining us guys. Really appreciate it. Cheers guys. Cheers.